Um, hi, my name is Jake. I started to program when I was about five. I used several programming environments for kids before Python and then several methods of learning Python. In this talk will be about the things I tried and how well they worked, worked out. And I'm also interested in airplanes, as many of you may already have figured out, and robotics. So first I'll talk about the first things I used and how well they worked out. I started with these drag and drop blocks languages for kids. The basic concept behind these is you drag blocks of code out of a menu and snap them together to write simple programs. There are a lot of them, but the best ones I used were called Alice and Scratch. So the first thing I tried was called Alice. It's from CMU. It's a free download for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The reason I wanted it was because it has a 3D world, which appealed so they can make flying airplanes, actually. And objects in the world have methods and attributes, but partly because of that, it was a bit too complicated as my first language, but it would have been good later on. I, and I never made great flying airplanes because the code was too complicated. So here you've got a screenshot of Alice. On the left, you've got the menus from which you drag blocks of code. In the center, you've got the area to write to snap the blocks together, and on the top, you've got the area to visualize the program running, which can be enlarged while you're actually running the program. So another thing I tried a few years later, and I use it uh, quite a bit, is called Scratch. It's from MIT. Version one was a download. Version two is browser-based. Um, it had a 2D world. Each object had one script plus event handlers for keystrokes, etc. But it, it, which made it a lot simpler than Alice, and it was a great first language. It, version 2 had a huge community to share, remix, and run other people's stuff, and I built tons of stuff in it, mostly simple games. But I never made great flying airplanes because everything looks a bit cheesy. So here you've got the project page for a game I made after using Scratch for a, about a year. It's a simple um, Space Invaders based game, the, uh, not very much code. Here you can actually see the Scratch code and you've got three sprites and each one has a bit of code. Um, when you run it, you just use the arrow keys to move and space to fire and you just have to stop the enemies from reaching the red line. Since I moved up from the blocks languages, several new ones have appeared. Um, one's called Trinket. It seems more capable than Stratch was, but um, in, in making it more capable, it's lost a bit of the simplicity. And it's cool that it generates Python code based on your blocks, but it, that might intimidate beginners. Another's called Tinker, which looks capable and simple, but it's not free. So uh, next, I'll talk briefly about the things I use between the blocks languages in Python, and then how I actually learned Python. So uh, I used Logo, but it was a bit boring, only turtle graphics. I used some robot battle type things, but they used trigonometry and other things I didn't understand at the time for basic uh, things like movement and targeting. I'll come back to them one day. I just generally need to understand programming in general better. So I started with Python when I was about eight and a half. I picked it because my dad recommended I dan dynamically type language, whatever that is. <laughs> and it looked like there were lots of courses online. So I started learning Python on a 15 hour, hour um, online tutorial from Codecademy. It covered ba basic Python, but the Assignments weren't very challenging, usually just a few lines of code, and it, there were no graphics, which isn't a great thing for a kid. So here you've got a screenshot of Codecademy with the menus, with the instructions on the left, the area to write code in the center, and the console in the upper right corner. 
So after that, I used an online textbook with exercises on interactivepython.org. It also ran Python in the browser, but it was just turtle graphics, so it, it wasn't bad, but it didn't really grab me. So here you've got a screenshot. In this, on the left, you can write the code. Is the error to write code, and on the right is the output. So I wanted to write games. So my dad installed a local copy of Python with Pygame, and we found some online tutorials. There are a lot of them, but we couldn't find a good one. There were no exercises. They weren't easy to understand, and they were full of broken links. And Pygame was a bit complicated for me at the time. I needed a proper structured course, and there were actually lots. The best looking one was an introduction to interactive programming Python from Rice University on Coursera. So it was really good. They provided a graphics module called Simpagoo that's good enough to write fun games, but not too complicated. It ran well in the browser. They provided an online editor at codesculptor.org, and you could also download the packages and run them locally too. It had challenging assignments, and all of which were games, and it covered most of basic Python. It was two parts, 10 hours per week and five weeks each, with two more two-part follow-on courses, making for about 300 hours of course material in total. Yeah. Um, there you go. So this is their online editor, Code Sculptor, which here I've got my final project for an introduction to interactive programming in Python part two. It's about 400 lines of code and it's an implementation of asteroids without rock splitting. So when you run it, it's quite simple. You just use the arrow keys to move, space to fire, um, and yeah. So in terms of what I'll do next, I still have the last two of the six parts in the Coursera series to do. Next I'll fool around some more with Simple GUI and then learn Pygame, and then I think I'll make some Android apps, maybe with Python and Kivi or Java. And I really want to make games with good flying airplanes. I've been at this for five years and I still haven't. <laughs> Thanks, and yeah, don't really have much time left for questions this time.